oh, we wouldn't have crucified you. We wouldn't have killed you. We would. Yeah, sure you would. You know, who do you think you're lying to? <laughs> Isaiah 7:14 says, "Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign." And behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. You'll find that in Matthew 123. God with us. And lo, a voice from heaven, Matthew 317, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. John 1, 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So let's pose some questions here about whether the world today would accept the Lord Jesus Christ as He was when He came as His first advent, or are they, as the Lord Jesus Christ said, hypocrites? Fill you up to measure your fathers. Would the world believe this is the first question that God would come to earth as a man? Would God come to earth as a man? Well, in 1938, they uh, brought out an individual known as Superman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they would, but not as we want, we will think, I mean, now, ignoring those that do not believe in God, okay, uh, the first question in reference to this, would they believe that God would come as a man, is, well, first of all, what is the nature of God, you know, <laughs> uh, what is the nature of God? Well, the world declares that God can be everything from a non- physical power okay to some alien life form from another planet like Superman that's a pretty broad definition of the nature of God the point here being is that the world decides what and who God is or is not they could care less about the God who is declared about himself in his words that he has given to and preserved for mankind. No, God must conform to the will of mankind. God must conform to what man says, what the world says, God is to be. Which leads to the next question under that heading is would God come to earth as a man? Well, which God are you talking about? Okay. Uh, the sentient, self-aware, all-powerful benefactor of mankind who is an unseen and undefinable power floating around somewhere out there in the universe? <laughs> uh, you know, is it the alien being who seeded this planet with their DNA? Uh, you know, which God are you talking about here? I mean, the benign, infinite old man uh, sitting up somewhere in heaven, rocking chair on his porch, uh, you know, and looking down, you know, uh, with love upon all his children because all men are created in the image of God. You know, is it Yahweh? You know, uh, you know which is, you know, I, I got to touch on this one here, and I know anybody out there in YouTube, <laughs> there's a lot of folks going to get mad on me. Okay, this is an English Bible. We speak English. Okay, you can't pronounce the Hebrew word that you are trying to turn into Yahweh. Okay, it's Jehovah. It's Jehovah. Okay, we don't call Jesus Jesus or Isis or John Yon or James. 
you speak English, what do you <laughs> <laughs> the English, okay, Yahweh. The, that that's them trying to no. pronounce a Hebrew word that is not able to no. be pronounced yeah. by mankind. Okay, they translate Jehovah. So I mean, no. you know, is it that is that the God you're saying? You know, the the Judeo Christian traditional God. No. Uh, how about the liberal? <laughs> modern, all-accommodating God, you know, who changes to meet the needs of the times and the morals of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, is that the God that you're talking about? Uh, you know, is it Allah? Uh, I mean, Muhammad himself. Uh, we're talking about in Sunday school. Said in the Quran, our God is not your God, and your God is not our God. Well, no kidding. That's probably about the only thing he got right. Uh, uh, Diana, Krishna. I mean, there have got to be hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of man-made gods out there. You know, and they're willing to take any one of them, just not the God of the Bible and not the Bible of the living God. Yeah. Now still under our first heading. Oh, would God come to earth as a man? Well, what about the virgin birth? Where do you stand on that? They didn't believe it then, and they don't believe it now. Uh, the Jews still refer to Jesus Christ as a bastard. Uh, so does Islam refer to him as a bastard, and that's just a man, just an, another prophet. Uh, the modern ecumenical fake Christianity does not believe that Jesus is divine. Uh, there are others that believe that he is just a son of God, uh, those that will even say that Lucifer was his brother. And I wouldn't want to be standing before God and answering for that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, now, the Catholics believe that Jesus Christ is the virgin born of the begotten Son of God. Okay? But they also believe that he can be controlled at the will of any priest at any time in the earth, you know, when they need to bring him down for the Mass. And that Mary is the queen of heaven and is the mediatrix between men and God. So they pervert the virgin birth. Would the world today accept the prophet's Messiah, Jesus Christ? That's the Jesus that came at the first advent. How many remember, I remember when it first came out, the uh, theatrical Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> a, the social rebel fornicating hippie. Right. Had him having a, uh, you know, a physical affair with Barry Magdalene. Or the red-haired, blue-eyed, effeminate, uh, sheepish, sheepy, you know, uh, Roman Catholic Jesus Christ. Okay, I said, and I remember one of my mom had little plates that hung up on the wall that had a picture of Jesus with a flaming heart. And I'm telling you, he had red hair, blue eyes, and freckles. <laughs> Whiter than I am. <laughs> You know, or how about the political, social justice warrior Jesus that is so popular uh, today with, you know, the BLM and, and the liberals and the alphabet crowd. Okay, this would be the Jesus that uh, Francis the Talking Mule invoked this week when he pronounced that civil unions uh, among sodomites is a okay and has been approved now by the Church of Rome. And, uh, you know, 
Like any any new little pictures of Jesus that come out, you know, red hair, blue eyes, freckles, and you have a rainbow colored uh, thing on yeah. campus. Yeah. Alright, you know. Uh, you know, the cross dress of Jesus. Oh my word. Now they love the baby Jesus. Everybody loves babies. You know. They love the Sermon on the Mount. They love the Jesus that healed. They love the Jesus that raised the dead. Uh, just don't mention <laughs> that mean-spirited, inflexible, dogmatic, Bible-preaching, Bible-quoting, verbally abusive Jesus that those Bible-thumping fanatics believe in. Like the one we just read about here in Matthew 23. Okay. Now, let's look at some more about that. Luke 11. I mean, you know, yeah, we know you want to rip these pages out of the Bible. You don't want them in there. Does it meet your idea of what it is to be a Christian and to be Christ-like? Well, Matthew 11, verse 29. Luke, I'm sorry. Luke 11, 29. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, this is an evil generation. Well, that will win a lot of votes in the election. Huh? This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. Stay there, and let's go to verse 39. And we'll read everything here that the Lord has to say. The Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Ye fools! Did not do that made that which is without make that which is within also? But rather give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe unto you, Pharisees! For ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Woe unto you, Pharisees! For you love the uppermost seats in synagogues and greetings. In markets, woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Then answered one of the lawyers, and said unto him, Master, thus saying, Thou reproachest us also. You should have kept your mouth shut, fellow. <laughs> and he said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers! For ye laid men with burdens grievous to be borne, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias which perished between the altar and the temple, verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe unto you lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in you Kinder. That's just sweet, loving, kind speech there, right? Uh, all right, how about going back to Matthew chapter 12? I mean, that sweet, loving, kind Jesus is in here somewhere, isn't he? Matthew 12, verse 34. Oh, generation of vipers! How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. 
Matthew 23 again. Verses 28 through 35. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Mm -hmm. And I'll just read a couple chapters later, right? Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up them the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, Yes, generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye will kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, the son of Berechias, whom he slew between the temple and the altar. Back up to uh, Matthew 21, 12 and 13. And Jesus went into the temple of God. And cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. In more ways than one. And lastly, John chapter 2 the same thing. That was at the ending of his ministry. John 2 is at the beginning of his ministry. 13 through 17. And the Jews' Passover was at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. And he said unto them that sold doves, Take these things, hence make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And at the very end of his ministry, he tells them, Your house is left unto you deadly. I mean, they want to bring in the kingdom of peace. I mean, isn't that what everybody says all the time? Uh, but they want to do it without the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, how about Jesus' sinlessness? Let's address that one. Well, frankly, only the redeemed believe in the sinlessness of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. There is no lost person out there who believes that Jesus Christ as a man was sinless because he chose not to sin. That's what they don't believe. There will be those that, oh yeah, I believe he was sinless, but they believe he was sinless because he was incapable of sinning. Well, that's a lie. That's an absolute lie. Okay? The fact is, there was even some amongst born-again Christians that believed that Jesus could not sin, was incapable of sinning. Well, <laughs> then why in the scriptures do we find Jesus Christ in the wilderness before his ministry began to be tempted of the devil? Okay. Now, the devil is wicked. The devil is evil. But the devil ain't stupid. <laughs> why would he waste his time trying to tempt 
the Lord Jesus Christ to sin if he was incapable of sinning. In fact, the scriptures state that after those temptations that the devil left him for a season. A season is a space of time. Okay? He kept coming back. He tried all throughout those three and a half years to tempt the Lord Jesus Christ into sinning in hope of destroying God's plan of salvation and destroying the Lord Jesus Christ. Back the night of his betrayal, after Judas had already left their Passover dinner, Jesus told his faithful disciples, this is Luke 22, 28, Ye are they which have continued with me in all my temptations. Plural. He's very capable of sinning if he took, if he didn't have the capacity to choose right and wrong, it would have been pointless. He had to have an earned righteousness. He's the only human being that ever had an earned righteousness. See, but the world wants.